Can you believe it? The killer has finally been revealed. Well, that's if there's not one final twist in the pipeline for the finale. With episode 9 being titled 30, this episode was centered around filling in the 30 minute time gap that was present on the night that Ben was poisoned, which Mabel, Oliver and Charles were trying to fill in. Oh, and also it was Mabel's 30th birthday. So with that, let's recap, break down and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Only Murders in the Building, Episode 9, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. A mother would do anything to protect their child is a line which was spoken in the previous episode, and it's one that's become even more prominent and relevant in this penultimate episode of Season 3. Whilst originally we thought it was about Loretta and the fact that she thought Dickie killed his brother Ben, which made her want to take responsibility for the murder because she thought she was protecting him, Alongside this, all this time, there was another mother and son duo present on screen. One which had an extremely weird relationship and should have been thought of just as much when we heard that line. This was Donna and Cliff. Why did Donna do it? Well, there's nothing Donna cares for more in this world other than her son, as we've seen with the way that she treats him, those weird lip kisses. So there's nothing she wouldn't do in order to protect him. Originally, Donna didn't want to go ahead with Oliver's musical because she didn't think it was good enough, but Cliff stepped in and spoke up and said that he wanted to take charge of it, something which you could see that Donna was fearful of. With Death Rattle being Cliff's first Broadway production, to the public and the industry it would be seen as a career-defining production, so there was a lot of pressure on it going right in order to secure the future career that Cliff would be going on to have. However, with the critic leaving a review of the musical that hadn't gone public yet and calling Ben as wooden as the lighthouse that was on stage, after Donna read it, she knew that Ben was the weak link of the production and had the potential to ruin the entirety of her son's career before it even got started. This was the main piece of motive that Donna had. No personal reasons, just the protection of her son. So with that, she shredded the review which she found, which was the noise that Howard heard when he was there. She kept behind one of the cookies that Cliff tried to offer Ben earlier, laced it with the rat poisoning that Mabel found, which I do think is a bit silly, as surely Donna would have got rid of the evidence. But then, she left it in Ben's dressing room for him to find, and with a gentle nudge at the bottom of the stairs, telling him to go to his dressing room and do whatever he could to make sure that he was nice to himself. The planning had worked, and Ben demolished the cookie that was in front of him, meaning that the poison would have enough time to kick in when he was on stage and what we saw occur on opening night did, all because of her. However, when it failed and Ben came back to life, it's also assumed that she would have been the person that was behind the pushing of him down the elevator shaft, because the original plan failed. At least, that's what we've been told. I personally think that there's going to be another twist and there will be a second killer. I think it could potentially be Tobert. I don't think Donna would also plan to catch Ben off guard and then push him down the shaft. I just don't feel like that's the case. Will Loretta get out of jail? Right at the end of the episode, we saw that Mabel, Charles and Oliver all made their way to Donna's hearing to see if the case was going to progress with her being the main suspect of the murder. When the three of them arrived, we saw that in the stands watching on at the Retta was Donna, most likely making sure that the threat of ever being caught was going to be eradicated with the progression of Donna being convicted. So Donna was there to clear her own mind. Obviously, it's clear to see that Donna was most definitely involved due to the evidence that Mabel, Charles and Oliver had acquired, even if it is just the poisoning and not the pushing, as I feel like there's no other reason for her to be there. I personally think that Loretta will get off of the charges. If it's anything like other elements of the story, such as Oliver's heart attack, it will just be brushed over and be inconsequential, so I think she will get out of it quite easily. I just think there will be a hunt for a second killer. Who wrote on the mirror? The other massive revelation that occurred in this episode of the show was that we finally found out who Ben was talking to in his dressing room, and we also found out who wrote the note calling him a pig that was on his mirror. And it was none other than Ben himself. And the person he was talking to wasn't actually a person, he was talking to a cookie, something that many of us predicted a long time ago when the episode first aired. It was solved due to Mabel hearing Oliver and the way that he spoke about his dip. I genuinely feel like that's the main reason that they made it Mabel's birthday, so that they could tie it into the revelation, because it only happened because there was a candle inside of it. Cookies were Ben's weakness as we saw in the very first episode of season 3, so it made sense that he'd be talking to something like that. The type of words that he used, such as, I want you so bad, you're going to ruin my career, I'm going to like it, 
or things that can definitely be associated with Ben eating a cookie and somebody having an addiction to it. The sad part about this though is that he was only driven to eat the cookie and to think of himself as that because of a chain of events that occurred. Ben originally went to the theatre excited about opening night and looking forward to the musical that was going to be debuting. However, upon getting there and wanting to give everybody gifts that he spent time making, things just kept going wrong. Katie was rude to him, he was tempted with a cookie from Cliff, he found out Dickie wanted to stop working with him, he had an argument with Loretta, he was hit by Charles, and then he fired Tobbard. He went from being excited and trying to do something nice for his cast members, to feeling like the most alone person in the entirety of the world, and not being able to trust any of them. So his own demise was something which was happening as the evening was unfolding. Had none of those things happened, he might not have been tempted to eat that cookie that was on his desk in his dressing room. Overall review. I thought this was a good episode of the show. It followed on from last week's fantastic episode in a way that kept up the pace and allowed us to continually guess what was going to be happening. The fact that we got the revelation of the identity of the killer with one episode to go does most definitely make me think that there's more than meets the eye, and there will be one final twist which does occur. Seeing Mabel, Oliver and Charles all back together is something that I'm so glad about. They really shine as a three and you can feel the connection between them all when they share a scene, and they bounce the comedy off of one another. From a stylistic point of view, the way that the show handled showing us the 30 minute time frame was really creative, and I thought it made it so much more interesting to watch. Having it with the three main characters in the scene just watching on like a group of silent viewers watching a play stayed true to the theme of this season of the show, and we could see their reactions in real time without the need for it to continually cut. Dickie still doesn't know that Loretta is his mother, which is something that I thought was interesting to keep in the bag until the finale. His response is something that I'm eagerly waiting to see. Will it be good? Will it be bad? Judging by how emotional Dickie is, I feel he could feel like he's being betrayed, but I guess time will tell with that. With one episode to go, in a murder mystery, it's far from over, and it still very much feels like there's so much more to come. So, bring on the finale. So, there you have it. Only Murders in the Building Episode 9 Ending Explained If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.